The Streets, Traffic, and Refuge Committee will be called to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Murphy. Here. Alderman Kotar. Here. Alderwoman Martin. Here. Alderwoman Boyd. Here. Alderman Bosley. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Present. Chairman Boyd. Present. Six present, you have quorum. Thank you. Um, Alderman Bosley may not make it, so he asked to be excused. Um, I'll entertain a motion on the minutes for May 26, 2020. I move, I move to approve the minutes of May 26, 2020. Second. It's been moved and second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Murphy. Aye. Alderman Kotar. Aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Middlebrook. Aye. Chairman Boyd. Aye. Six eye votes. Okay, we are going to skip to um, section seven committee discussions. I believe we have the street director on the line. Is that correct? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? I can hear you. So Jamie Wilson is on the line, the director of streets, and he's going to make a presentation uh, about uh, the speed hump policy. It shouldn't take a whole lot of time, but um, they've done some updates to the policy and I wanted him to come before the committee and just kind of talk about it because we will talk about board bill 24, which is kind of related. So go ahead, uh, Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, as Mr. Chairman said, I um, wanted to discuss our uh, traffic calling policy and specifically uh, some changes we'd like to make an amendment to the, the policy to in the area of the speed humps. Um, fully realizing since we did this traffic calming policy, there's a lot of tools in the toolbox for calming uh, traffic in neighborhoods, but by practice, it's become the most popular and mostly because it's the cheapest and most effective for the for the dollars spent, uh, the speed humps themselves. Um, as such, we've learned learned a bit since we first passed the, the traffic calling policy. So we'd like to make a slight amendment to it um, to facilitate the uh, the implementation implementation of these while still maintaining some of our design criteria and standards with them. Um, I'll just run through kind of what we're proposing. And my intent was to kind of work with this committee, take your input and see what we have uh, as far as a, a potential amendment here to this uh, traffic calling policy. The way it would play out is um, we wouldn't make any changes to this. And as a reminder, the traffic calling policy is held at the Board of Public Service. So I would, uh, upon concurrence with you guys, propose a recommendation that this be adopted by the Board of Public Service at the, at the next uh, earliest convenience when they meet. Um, so running through just a quick, uh, it's basically a one pager. I'll hit the highlights. Um, the first is um, just identifying and basically regurgitating some of the basic criteria we have for speed homes, um, recommendations and kind of guidance for it. Uh, the first being that they, this, this is really intended for neighborhood streets, whether those are local roads or neighborhood collectors. Um, streets where you're we have the same type of width and, and speed limit at 25 miles per hour. We won't see speed humps on some of the higher 35, 45 mile an hour streets. They're just not appropriate for that high of a speed. So intended for neighborhood streets. So just a reminder of that. Uh, in general, we, we try to keep those speed humps off our uh, snow routes, especially the primary routes. Um, not to say there's not a secondary or perhaps even a hill route that we may consider, but that's something uh, we'll try to stay away from the primaries and it's, um, open for discussion and ultimately be under me uh, to make that assessment if it's appropriate for uh, implementation on a, a, a secondary snow route. Um, also, again, guidance, try not to put these speed humps on streets 
uh, directly serving, uh, servicing a hospital emergency medical facility. Um, again, they're intended for some of the high activity pedestrian and bicyclist areas like around schools and parks. Um, we also don't want to install these uh, speed humps on a street where a majority of the street has been degraded. The pavement quality is so bad. We don't want to dig out 14 feet, put a speed hump on a really bad street. So there may be a case where we have a great selection or uh, location for a speed hump, but we may need to look at the street uh, in a bigger scope to see what we can do so we don't install something around uh, a street that's falling around, uh, falling apart around it. Um, so that'll be something I'll have to assess with it. I don't say that comes up all the time, but just something to keep in mind if we ever come across one like that. Has not happened yet, but just uh, it's a possibility. Um, and then basically the uh, all design standards and construction apply per uh, Board of Public Service um, policy. Um, then it's ultimately under me, discretion, engineering, judgment, street director, to approve these locations. Uh, the way the process will play out is pretty much like it is now with uh, the requests that come in traditionally through the, the alder person and they contact us and the uh, Board of Public Service. They have got a complaint about speed uh, issues on this neighborhood street. Um, we look at it and this is where we're gonna, um, the fork in the road here. Traditionally, we were requiring the speed studies to validate those complaints. Under this proposed amendment, we're taking that out. Uh, it is still an option for folks uh, for all the persons, if they want to use a speed study to validate the complaint from their constituent, they will have that option through the Board of Public Service on-call consultant. I apologize. I'm on the street here, guys. I got a loader passing me up here. So they will still have the option to utilize the Board of Public Services on-call traffic consultant to perform that speed study, but it is not required for the installation of a speed hump. If the criteria that I kind of ran through earlier are met, uh, we are not holding um, the alder person to a mandatory speed study. So with all the design criteria in place and all the, uh, with that being met, we can go ahead with the installation through the normal process through DPS. Um, but again, it's not a required um, thing to have that speed study. So then again, the rest of the process plays out. If the funds are available, um, through the ward, then, then the process proceeds through through BPS, uh, as you guys are, are, are used to. So that's in essence what um, the amendment is. And now, really, the big difference uh, is the the speed study option. So um, I I don't know. Um, it's probably every uh, all the person has a different flavor for this, as far as if they want to use that that uh, speed study to validate those constituents' uh, complaints. Um, to kind of meter the flow of their of their money being spent on this, especially when times are tough here. So that option is completely out there, and it's also, uh, like I said, an option. So Mr. Chairman, I'll take uh, questions if, if anyone has any. Sure, thank you. Uh, let's take questions from the committee. Um, Alderwoman Murphy. Yes, okay, thanks, uh, Jamie. Um, I, I guess my first question would be, so I have speed studies in the pipeline now, um, so I can cancel them. That is, and I, I, as I was calling in, I was thinking about that. I probably should have had Rich Bradley here from the Board of Public Service. Once it's that far, I can't really speak towards their contractual obligations, what they're at. Um, I think that's gonna be a, a very logical, natural follow-up we have to this discussion. Um, and I can go myself to contact Rich um, to see where, where we're at with the ones that are in the queue, uh, what's been handed out. It's kind of a, we're in the Bermuda Triangle of data collection right now with, uh, with, COVID, with COVID times here. It's not a great time to collect traffic counts or speed studies to be representative of the normal, uh, normal season. So it's been on hold. I don't know where they're at contractually, but uh, I will follow up with Rich and uh, get word of that back to um, Chairman Boyd, and, and he can uh, send that out to you folks. Okay, yeah, th that would be my main concern if I could cancel them. And, uh, and uh, am I still obligated to pay for them? But I guess like you said, that would be if they were contracted out or not. So anyway, yeah, I, I would need input on that. I see, I think it's, it's wonderful, I guess. I think we need to be consistent throughout the city though. I, I can see the problem now 
some wards have speed humps everywhere. And one of the things um, we were able to use was the data from the speed study. But if not all the aldermen require them, then I think we look bad if we don't just go ahead and put them in. Say that's, I, I already am faced with that. Some of them were put in some places in the city and they know they didn't have a speed study and blah, blah, you know. And so I require a speed study and now I don't require a speed study. So now I got to go back. I, Schiller is a place that came to mind. Those people were on all over the media the other day and I just told them the speed study did not warrant a speed hump. So now I guess I could go ahead and put one or two in on Schiller now. It, it, is, is that my understanding now? Even though the initial speed study, I guess about a year ago or so, said 85% of the people went 24 miles an hour. They want one anyway. Say. Yeah, so you would have the option to install a speed hump in that location. Okay, so I, I, my vision, I envision now speed humps on every street because everyone's going to be afraid not to put one in if we're not required to do the speed set. That was one thing that gave us, uh, I didn't want to pay for it, mind you now, but I said that was one thing that did give us uh, uh, a leg to stand on uh, because people want them everywhere, say. But anyway, I, okay, that's all. I'll let somebody else talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, um, Alderman Cole. Yeah, I guess just echoing um, what the older woman from the 13th said, Jamie, I know I've got some in the pipeline I would like to know yep. sort of the status of those. Honestly, most of them I think are justified. So if I don't have to pay for the speed study, that would be ideal. Yeah. Um, especially if we're changing the policy now. Uh, yeah, and I guess we'll just have to think through, I mean, you know, if some aldermen want to put them on every block and others don't, I guess so be it. But um, I guess it will still, I mean, you, you, you guys will still weigh in and make a recommendation, yeah. correct, Jamie, whether it's warranted or not, even without a speed study? Yeah, we'll review that, that criteria there. And, and again, if we're um, in one of those worst case scenarios where someone's proposing, you know, a dozen speed humps and, <laughs> A couple different blocks you know some of the those still that's why i kind of hit on real quick those design standards um we still gotta have the right spacing we still can't you can't nuke a neighborhood with with a dozen of them in a couple blocks so we'll still have those safeguards in place and there's again there's nothing like we i said we use the first couple of years to learn from this we'll use this to learn from here and then maybe who knows where we go in the future a couple of years down the road maybe we find a better way to do it i think it's Best to just kind of learn with uh, there's no cookie cutter solution that works for everyone in the country it's it's uh we'll have to see what fits best for st louis good nothing further chairman okay all the woman marching thank you um i guess i have more concerns and i do questions i just feel like we're taking away uh data driven decisions um in the city um you know, as aldermen, I don't think any of us are civil engineers. And so I just, I share the same concerns uh, with Alderman Murphy that this just kind of will be, um, you know, if an alderman wants to put 20 speed humps in, then that alderman can do it. Whereas another alderman may need to spend more capital on something else. I, I don't see how this, I feel like we need to get, have fewer siloed budget decisions and how we spend our money then um, especially facing the budget crisis. We just need, uh, if we're having a budget crisis and we're already struggling with ward capital and then all of a sudden, you know, one ward's uh, spending all that ward capital on a bunch of speed humps. I just don't know how, how smart that is right now. And I also um, feel like we need to get away from that type of decision-making and look at it more in a, a city-wide perspective or at least kind of, um, portions of the city at the very least. So um, what exactly are, when you talk about the protections in place, can you kind of reiterate those? Because it seems to me that it really, if you do want to put in 13 or 14 at one time um, in your ward, you can with this. I'm just saying like uh, as far as design standards, like you wouldn't have any closer than, you know, 500 feet apart type thing, for example. So if you got a 
short block, 300 plus or 600 feet or, or whatever, you may only see, or even some of the longer 900 ones, you, you won't see, but one per block, um, or perhaps two in the longest one. But um, it, again, it, it, it does open up. I did have the same initial concerns. And back when we drafted this traffic calling policy in 2016, maybe, um, that was the initial. We need to put some safeguards on this so it doesn't become the next uh, stop sign uh, issue mm-hmm. in the city of having too many and then folks start ignoring it. Granted, I will say it's hard to ignore something you got to drive over rather than make a visual um, mm-hmm. decision as you go through it. Um, but again, it's another one of the concerns I have from the street department's perspective is what we end up maintaining um, by putting more of these out there, um, being the need to maintain these uh, as we go down the road and things start degrading, we have to make sure we're on top of it too. So it's again, it's not, um, not where I first started off a couple of years ago with it, um, trying to work with folks now. And then uh, again, it's going to be a living uh, policy. I think as, as we learn, maybe we have to quickly uh, come to terms with things after a year and see how this, this goes. Okay. I almost wonder too, if there's a way to have a more expedited process for the speed studies, you know, maybe a cheaper alternative, more in-house solution, or um, maybe uh, alter the speed studies so that they're faster um, and more efficient than, you know, than just throwing the speed humps everywhere. So, all right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, Ottawa and Middlebrook. Thank you, my questions have been asked and answered. Okay, um, I, I would agree with some of the comments made by the committee. I hello, would, hello. Oh, I am so sorry, Alderman Pam Boyd. Really? I, I don't see, I'm sorry, I don't see how I missed you. I don't either. I won't do it again anytime thank soon. You so, thank you so much. I Jeff. am over 50, so I'm gonna use that as an excuse. For uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. My question to Jamie is this, uh, is there any other avenues beside the speed humps to use for co- traffic calming because I, I i i hear what you all are saying about the speed bumps but i had it where you i put speed bumps on the street and they made no difference on that street the speed bumps are lower and they just roll over them it's not stopping anything it's not slowing traffic down so do you have any other avenues? I thought I had heard you all were looking at different avenues for traffic calming on our streets. Yeah, there's a number of different things. Uh, I guess it depends where we're talking. Um, I'm trying to think of in, in your ward where we've had those where it may be, it should be at a, at a standard three or three and a half inch uh, rise at, at the at the crest of the speed hump so it's basically seven feet up seven feet down um there are things like and we've done this in the city some of the smaller traffic circles so it's some of the intersections where like our standard width in the city a lot of times is a 36 inch a 36 foot street you got a couple drive lanes and parking on each side and where two of those type of streets intersect you can usually get a uh, traffic circle in there um i actually believe we have one at north point and Right, you do, Jamie. You have one on North yeah. Point. And you have speed bumps at speed humps or whatever they call it on North Point. But the ones yeah, that you the- saw on Mimica were not like those. And those were the ones I asked about. I was told I couldn't get those. So I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that you all have out there in regards to the speed humps. And then if uh, I'm in agreement with... Uh, about the county and and the, and the county traffic county, and so I guess my question is why we have to indulge that cost when that's something that should be a part of that process. I'm sorry. What was the last part? Of, you're saying that the process of installing them should be internal to the city. Is that what you're saying? Right, because in the beginning when it happened, you, we weren't paying for the traffic county. And then all of a sudden we start paying for it. And so now you are saying, well, you don't need traffic county. Well, I'm like, all the woman more, I don't know anything about 
you know, how or how many or what needs to happen. I could tell you we need them, but I'm, I'm not that in tune to that technology. So if that's part of your job anyway, why do we have to pay for it? I got gotcha. you. And that's originally where we started with the policy is uh, doing these speed studies in-house. Uh, and we were able to keep up a bit till it really picked up speed. And then it quickly outgrew the demand, uh, the request, uh, quickly outgrew uh, our ability to keep up. And then we got so far behind. That's where it ended up. We had to farm it out to the consultants. Oh, okay. All right. And so do you have, uh, like I said, on North Point is red speed bumps, but on Memica is black speed bumps. And so it's only like four. And that's, that street is from West Florissant to Lillian. That's like a 10 block radius. And so it's not stopping anything. Yeah, I think uh, on North, I think we had some of those temporary speed humps, the, the hard rubberized ones. And that's right. where that may have been some of the first installations in the whole city. Um, quickly learned that those are, I believe more extensive than the actual asphalt ones. And they're also extremely labor intensive. I think each of those ones you see in your street had about two or 300 bolts that had to be driven into the pavement. Right. Um, that, granted, granted, they have held up, uh, but I guarantee if that was ever pulled up, I, it'd be rubble underneath it for sure as far as the pavement. Um, it was really tough to fit all our own guys did that, fitting those together and, and drilling those holes and driving the, those bolts in them too. So we kind of got away from that. Plus, at the time, we had no clue how they were going to hold up in the future. Uh, and then once we saw the cost, that what is it, two thousand, maybe twenty five hundred for speed hump for asphalt. Right. It was definitely right. And the, the the rubber ones too. So it kind of became a moot point once the asphalt ones were so uh, cost effective. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, again, I apologize. I'm on Boyd. I looked at Boyd and saw my name, and that's how I skipped you. <laughs> um, so I think being data driven is very important. I would agree with some of the comments about um, some aldermen being able to just on their own um, install speed humps, kind of like how we do stop signs, which sometimes become problematic. Um, I would prefer that we had a consistent policy across the city um, because as somebody said up here, we don't know. We're not engineers. It's not our call to decide if it should get a speed hump. Um, I'm you know, kind of challenged if there's an actual study that says there's no need for a speed hump and then we put one in anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and it becomes a nuisance. Um, some of the challenges I've been seeing around my ward is that they want speed humps, but then they don't want them in front of their house. So it's kind of like the whole the musical trash can thing. They want they want dumpsters, but they don't put the dumpster behind my house. Yeah. And so, if we had a citywide policy, I think that would be helpful. Um, that would be better. I don't know um, what the full board really thinks about that. I think we should um, spend more time on this. I'm okay with the policy. Um, all the woman Sharon Tires, I don't see her here, but she has a board bill, board bill 24, I believe. Yeah. You, did I hear all the woman Tires? Okay, board bill 24. And basically it, it reads like the director spoke. Um, the only thing that looks like it's been amended um, is consistent with um, what the director said. So um, because we're not on that board bill, I want to talk about the whole board bill. Um, but what's the will of the committee? Uh, is this something that the committee can accept? Should it be put out to the full board for comment? Uh, what's the will? And I'll just go in order. Um, Alderwoman Murphy. I, I think it, it maybe might be too soon. I don't know. I said personally, I, I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place because I have studies that said you couldn't get it. And now I'm going to say, oh, you can have it. And I'm saying that one street in particular that's going to make me look like a fool now. Uh, they were back and forth on social media, sit on my porch and da 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 da. -da. And so you had that data that said it, you know, it didn't require it this time and that I would revisit it later. 
well, now I'm going to say, oh, I, we changed my mind, or and I can put in the speed humps. I don't mind if they have the speed humps if they want, but I got to know what to say to everybody in the ward because a lot of people, everybody wants a speed hump. It, 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 and I'm sure all the aldermen would attest to that. And so you can't tell one block no and the other block yes. And we're pretty soon, I think the city, some wards already do, it's going to look like a mogul, you know, going down the street. But then when they say, oh, I, you know, this street had a speed hump and I know it didn't warrant it and, you know, and stuff like that. So anyway, I, to me, it puts us between a rock and a hard place. We need a policy. So I would rather sit on this for a little bit, perhaps. I do like the idea that you didn't have to pay for the speed study, though. Um, and then what was, Jamie, just another question. What was the limit for the speed hump? Was it, you said the street, the, the, the traffic couldn't be more than 30 miles an hour? Is that what you said? In general, nat nationally, well, I guess internationally, uh, speed humps by design, um, given those dimensions, I'm talking about that seven foot rise to about three and a half inches tall before you go seven feet back to grade. Um, that's really intended for streets that are those neighborhood streets, like a typical 25 mile an hour street, maybe okay. at best miles an hour, but really in that range. Um, because they don't want such an abrupt change in speed being implemented in the middle of a, a higher speed limit street, like 45 miles an hour, for example, is one of the more worst cases. But I will add that um, whether it's these past past requests that were either accepted, denied, whatever, or future ones, my intent of this amendment is not to throw you guys to the wolves of sorts of, you know, it's all on you guys so if it doesn't go through. I am absolutely available um, to discuss and give my recommendations. Maybe if we talk about some of these locations, I could find out more about um the conditions of it besides just a general speeding complaint this is not intended to throw the burden on you guys of um, yes or knowing a speed hump again i my last point i said on those basic criteria is, is up to me and my engineering judgment so if there's something we can talk about that i can see um as a cause for or against the speed hump i mean that's really the the intent here is is not to just install them everywhere to still use some judgment but at the same time not having it um completely relying on uh, a speed study for a day. Okay, I so 30 miles an hour is, you, you wouldn't put it on a, a street that had a speed limit of 35 miles an hour. So 30 is the limit. That, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm thinking of uh, Alderman uh, 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 Martin and I have Holly Hills and the speed limit is 30 miles an hour and everyone goes farting. But um, would that street warrant something? I'm not saying we want to do it. I'm just saying, because uh, uh, if 30 miles an hour is a limit, would I say, could we say that to people? Yeah, in those areas, that, I, without looking at a map of how that's federally classified as a road, it's probably a collector and there's different degrees of collectors. But in that area you're talking about, I would call that a neighborhood collector. And that's kind of in air quotes as I say that, mm -hmm. or it's, it's not directly servicing, um, you know, it's, fairly close to an arterial, um, not directly servicing an arterial or close to some highway ramp or something like that. So that is more of what I would envision as a neighborhood collector where it would be a potential candidate for speed homes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Alderman Coder. <clears throat> um, look, I'm fine with getting rid of the speed test requirement as long as, you know, we can still rely on Jamie or his staff's professional opinion as to whether it's warranted or not. I've been pretty frustrated with the speed study process, um, the length of time it takes. I had one come back with no recommendation for no speed study, but that was because we had the mile per hours on the street wrong. It's actually a 30 mile an hour, not a 35 mile zone. So I'd be fine with revising the policy um, to get rid of the studies, whether we do that today, or in a few weeks, I don't care. Okay, Otto and Martin. Thank you. Um, I guess I'm probably repeating myself here, but I just, what happens when, I feel like you're picking favorites as an alderman because say I have $40,000 to spend on this um, and then I run out and then how do I explain it to, you know, the other street that they didn't get their speed humps? Um, it just, 
seems like there's really a, we almost need a citywide strategy on this, like around schools first and then going out from there. Um, so I, again, think that we could maybe amend the speed study process or find a more efficient way, but um, I like having the speed, I don't like paying for the speed studies all the time, but I like having them. So thank you. All on Pam Boyd. No questions. All the one in Middlebrook. No comments. Okay, um, Jamie, I would ask that you kind of put this on hold and would you um, send me a copy of the policy that you're proposing so that I can just shoot it out to all members of the Board of Aldermen and try to get some feedback so we can have some consensus because it's not smart government policy if we're not making decisions based on data. That's just plain and simple. Yes, I can send that to you. Okay, okay. thank you, Jamie, I appreciate it. Okay, now we're gonna come up, uh, let's put Board Bill 23 before us that's sponsored by myself, um, presented by the Treasurer's Office. Um, Treasurer Jones, are you still with us? Yes. Okay, um, when we left off last time, we talked a little bit about um, we left off talking about booting, and there were two issues kind of on the table. It was, it was for me, it was booting, and it was um, the Hudson contract. Um, since then, we've got a, uh, a legal opinion from the city council's office, so we won't belabor that conversation about the contract. Um, but I do want to talk about the booting. You said that booting basically generates fifteen thousand dollars a year, correct? Uh, that was the figure I got from the, the, the last yearly um, revenue numbers. Okay, and I went back and looked at the, the revenue budget that was submitted by uh, Michelle Smart. And it has on here uh, at the top actual for 2019, $76,000 for boots. Uh, budget for 2020 was 95000 and now the projected 22 is 4,600. And certainly it's 4,600 because of um, the suspension of the booting program, right? Uh, I didn't put those numbers together. You'll have to ask Michelle what went into that number. Okay, Ms. Smart, you wanna talk about that? You're on mute, Michelle. Okay, can you hear me? We can. Okay. All right, so they, yes, the booting numbers that you have on that, on the budget presentation are the correct numbers. And the reason that um, it went down for projected for fiscal 20 is because of the COVID-19 and the fact that we did stop um, booting. Well, I'm not sure if you can say COVID-19, but it was certainly because you stopped booting. We stopped booting, yeah. Because you stopped booting eight months before um, March. Right, right. Um, I also have a report from um, Conduit Business Services receivable by fiscal year from fiscal year 13 all the way to 2020. And Michelle, I'm, I'm kind of um, conflicted with some numbers because I'm looking at fiscal year 19 and the data that's been presented to me shows 12 million seven hundred eighty seven thousand eight hundred and fifty eight dollars was received for fiscal year 19 and that is for ticket issuance and uh, i look at it's the numbers are a little off i'm looking at about 10 million 300 aggregately that you have for actuals on 2019 just like without, see, without seeing the report that you're referring to, I can't answer that question. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll email it to you after the hearing. All right. Alderman Boyd. Yes. Well, I don't I don't have the report either, but I can only speculate that might be the gross number. I don't know if that's the gross number or the net number, but conduit. Um, do you know if it's the gross number or the net number? 
I don't know. Actually, I got this several months ago from Carl Phillips. So I'm just going by what I'm reading on here. Gotcha. Um, they, they all, they under their old contract, they uh, charge the ticket processing fee. Okay. So, so if I don't, like I said, I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I can only speculate. So they charge the fee for the process. Okay. Um, uh, another question I had was. So who was the contractor for parking services during the month of March, April, and May? Um, so I believe midway through March, it would have been Conduent. And then in April, there was no parking contractor. And then we commenced uh, starting parking operations to transition in May and mid can't remember what point in May, but some point in May. Okay, um, Michelle, in, in March, uh, Conduit billed us for parking meter services, right? Yes. And was that uh, bill paid in full? That bill is probably paid in full now, yes. Okay, and um, parking operations were suspended. Uh, Madam Treasurer, was that like March the 8th or 15th or something like that? 16th, March 16th. March 16th. Okay, so my, my question is, Ms. Smart, did we pay the contractor for 100% of the services rendered when half the services were rendered? In which, are you talking ticketing or meters? Um, collection. For meter collection, um, that that invoice was paid um, based on the number of meters. Yes. But there was no collection for a couple of weeks, right? That is correct. Okay, so we paid a, a contractor for doing no work. Would that be correct? No. Okay, explain, Madam Treasurer. The way conduit bills us is per meter per month. Okay. It's a flat rate. It's a flat rate. So when did the contract for conduit officially end? Jared, do you have the Sure. I think it officially ended in January, but we extended on a monthly month by month basis. So we extended we extended, we allowed them to extend service for February and March. So February and March. Um Okay, so if, if, if so, the contract, Madam Treasurer, reads that it's basically equal installments over a 12 month period, or is it? I kind of explain that a little bit. I got confused with the based on meters. It depends on how many multi space and um, single space meters are in service. That number can fluctuate based on the numbers of meters that are in service. Sometimes we take meters out of service because they are not, uh, they're, they're broken or there are construction projects um, where we have to take meters off the street, off the sidewalks. Um, but that number fluctuates, you know, somewhere around 7,700 and 7,000 and some change, Jared, what's the number? Sure. The under the previous contract, the floor was seventy seven hundred. Uh, previously, we had ten thousand meters. Okay, and that's that's one side of the parking, and then they were also paid per ticket processed. Okay, so Condon was last paid for March. They were out of the picture as of March, let's say thirty first. Would that be right? Yes, their contract, their month extension expired, so there were no parking services. I believe paid for in April. Okay, yeah. and and when was the first invoice received from Hudson? Michelle, do you have? The, the first invoice was received um, mid, around mid to about the middle of May. About the, and that was for April services or May future services? What was that for? They had one provision for a startup caught for it in advance essentially. So like that was May. Right. part of May. So we advanced them for for startup costs. Is that what you're saying, Jared? No, they they essentially were able to get their payment 30 for 
I guess a month early for the first uh, for the first uh, month of the contract. Why were they able to get it uh, 30 days early? That's how I believe they, that was kind of their uh, arrangement with Xerox as well. So based on the way it was done previously, or but, content, I'm sorry. Right, but we're not conduit, right? So we don't have to do what conduit did. Would you agree? In some circumstances, it didn't seem like this was uh, that big of a deal for us in terms of it being a business term. Uh, they have startup costs uh, like any other company. So uh, that was a part of negotiations. Okay, let me ask you this, Jared. Um, was that talked about when you were um, working with the city council's office to make sure that the contract was in proper form? I cannot recall. I think it was, I can't recall at this time, um, but it's, like I said, like we talked for two months about the contract. So I can't recall if that's an issue that was brought up during, uh, during our time. Would you be able to uh, find emails that speaks to that? Not right now. Sure, sure. I'll look and see. I'll look and see at previous versions that were exchanged. Okay. Um, I just want to say this for the record. Um, we were all working together in good faith to, to do the Hudson contract. Um, there was nothing nefarious going on. It was all about transparency and integrity. We met a couple of times and there were some issues with the contract, the way it was laid out. I actually didn't get a chance to present some of the issues that I had with the contract, but so the city councilor uh, intervened and started working with Jared on the contract language. So I was just waiting to talk about it when it got into its near final form. And um, I think going behind the parking commission's back wasn't fair and executing the contract that was not in the spirit of cooperation and I'm real disappointed that that happened. And I'm hoping that we can find a way out of this situation because, you know, based on city council's opinion, the contract is, un is not enforceable. Now, Jared, we did, the committee did receive an email from you today with, you know, your thoughts about it. And it's not for the committee to decide because uh, we're not gonna play, you know, judge on this issue. We'll leave that to uh, the courts and it's unfortunate that we continue to have to go to court to do the right thing. Um, I am going to entertain a motion um, to pass board bill 23 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. I move to pass board bill 23 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Murphy? Aye. Alderman Kotar? Aye. Alderman Martin? Aye. Alderman Boyd? Aye. Alderman Bosley? Alderman Middlebrook? Aye. Chairman Boyd? Aye. Six aye votes. Okay, board bill 23 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Thank you, Madam Treasurer and your staff. Um, is Aldwoman Sharon Tyus present? Okay. Um, well, any announcements from the committee? I'll go around. Aldwoman Murphy. Uh, no, just wait. I'll just wait for the clarification on what we discussed about the speed hump, so I know what to do. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay, stay tuned. Alderman <laughs> Kotar. No, sir. Um, Alderman Martin. No, thank you. Alderman Pam Boyd. No. Alderman Middlebrook. No. Okay, hearing no announcements, the chair has no announcements. I will just say we will consider the Streets, Traffic, and Refuge Committee adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.